Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. This is a continuation of the Beginner's Sampler Quilt series. There's 12 blocks involved in this quilt, so if you're interested in taking this project on, at the very end of the video in the upper right hand corner of your screen is a link that you can click on to go and view the other videos involved in this quilt. And in one of the videos it's called the samplers supply list so you'll know what you need to purchase for this quilt. Now in this video I'm going to talk to you about machine quilting. You've got it all ready to go. You're about ready to get started on stitching everything together. So I want to talk about the kind of thread that I recommend you use. All right, here's just a few samples of colors and types of thread that can be used in machine quilting. They are specifically identified as machine quilting thread. So if you're going to go on the internet to look for some, all you need to do is enter machine quilting thread. And you don't have to enter anything other than that. Now, they come in a variety of colors. Most of your local stores are not going to offer a lot of colors, but there are a few. If you want more color options, you'll have to go on the internet. So these are solid colors. Now over here, this is a variegated thread. In other words, there's different shades of one particular color in the roll. So this particular one goes from light blue to dark blue, repeating it over and over again. Variegated threads offer a unique look to your quilt. Your quilt design uh, stitching fades in and out. Here it is in pink. I think you can see the colors a little better in the pink. And also I've used purple a lot too. These aren't the only colors, so there's other colors. I recommend you take your quilt top with you to the fabric store and try to match up some thread that works best with your quilt. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about your actual stitches on the quilt. Now remember, you've got 12 blocks on that quilt. They're all different. So you could do something called stitch in the ditch. That's where two pieces of fabric come together. So you're going to start here and you're going to stitch, leave the needle down, press your foot up, and turn the quilt. The quilt's heavy. And then you keep turning it to go all the way around. So you've turned it a whole bunch of times. Then you've got to go over to this one and do the same thing turning it and then this one. So you're going to turn this quilt close to a dozen times just on one block. Remember your quilt's heavy. It's going to be very taxing on you. So I don't recommend this method. Or if you still want to do stitch in the ditch you can start, let's say start over here, stitch down, stitch down, stitch down and keep going across. Then turn your quilt. So you only have to turn it once and then go along the other side. Okay, but you still have 11 more blocks. Now, here's another one. This is on a diagonal. You stitch along here, here, and here. Then turn the quilt. Here, here, here. You already, just on those two blocks, turn the quilt quite a few times. Remember, it's heavy. So I don't recommend stitch in the ditch for this quilt. So let me show you some other samples that I think are going to be better choices for you. This is just standard straight rows of stitching. On this particular sample, these are about two inches apart. I recommend if you're a beginner that you do it three to four inches apart until you get really used to this. So when you're in your machine, your quilt's going to be rolled up, okay? And you're going to start at the top and go all the way down to the very bottom. Then you're going to unroll the quilt and then stitch the next row. And you're going to keep going all the way across the quilt. When you've got all the way across, you turn the quilt get it rolled up to go down the next side. You've only had to turn your quilt one time, so it's not as tiring. Okay, let me show you another way. This is on a diagonal. 
So if you want to stitch straight rows on a diagonal, you're going to roll your quilt from corner to corner. All right? And put it in your machine and do your row of stitching. Just like you did on the other one. Then turn it, go to the other side, roll it up, and stitch across so that it has this kind of a pattern to it. I like diagonal stitching because it helps to hide mistakes. It fools the eye, okay, because we quilters, we're not perfect. Very few of us make an absolute perfect quilt, okay? So if you want to learn how to hide mistakes, do it on a diagonal. Okay, let me show you another one. A lot of sewing machines out there now have quilting stitches on it that are somewhat decorative, and this is my favorite favorite stitch. This is what I use to do my machine quilting. They're just straight lines, but wavy straight lines, okay? So again, you would start at the top and go across. And then turn your quilt once and repeat. And you can still do it on the diagonal, okay? You have your quilt rolled up, you do that wavy line. All right, now, if you're a little bit more experienced at quilting and you want a really tight look, you, these are about an inch and a half apart. This is with the wavy line. This is with the straight line. Okay, I don't recommend it if you're just getting started. Do, do the wider rows, okay? You won't get as tired. All right, so now, one more choice of decorative stitching. This I recommend if you are a little bit more experienced, you're getting, you're approaching that intermediate level and you want to break away from just regular straight lines of stitching. This is a decorative stitch in which you create your own. And I have a separate video on how to do this. This is rows of hearts in one continuous row. They're connected together all the way across. I have a very easy technique to do this. So if you're interested in being a little more decorative and you create your own design, the link to that video is appearing right about now in the upper right hand corner. I think you'll find this really interesting. Okay, now, Mr. Cameraman, if you wanna kinda of open up a little bit, here's the beginner sampler quilt, okay? Now I'm going to talk about directional sewing. I'm going to mostly focus on sewing that's going to go from top to bottom. I call it north and south and then there's also east and west going side to side. If you wanted to do the, the diagonal stitching, I'm going to focus over here. Look at this corner here and you're going to roll your quilt up from corner to corner all the way across. Okay? All right, and then from then on, everything's the same. Okay, so you got your quilt rolled up. You're gonna leave about this much that's not rolled up. Now, I'm gonna talk to you about where to place your sewing machine. Now, if your sewing machine is on a tiny little table shoved up against the wall in a little corner, that's not gonna work because you're gonna run into all kinds of issues if you have it there. So you need to relocate your sewing machine to a larger space. I recommend your dining room table if you have one or kitchen table that is at least bigger than your little corner table. Also, if you've got a couple of utility tables, put those together and you can use that. So you wanna place your sewing machine on this corner, not in the middle, but on this corner of your table so that as you unroll your quilt as you're stitching, you've got all this room here to lay it out on and then in front of the machine, you've got, or I should say behind the machine, you've got all this area here for your quilt to roll through the machine. You don't wanna leave it dangling over the edge because you're gonna get it caught, you're gonna get frustrated, your stitches are gonna come out really bad. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to meet you over at my sewing machine. Oh, 
Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about the type of presser foot that I recommend you use. So let's look at this standard foot over here. This is a standard presser foot that came with my sewing machine. If I tried to use this presser foot, it's going to cause my quilt top to begin to stretch and you might get little tucks. So your layers of fabric are going to shift from each other. It is not the best option for doing your quilting, your machine quilting. You can do it, and this is what I use when I first started, but I wasn't happy with my results. So the best way is to use a walking foot, okay? So I'm gonna show you my walking foot right now. Here it is. Now, not all walking feet look the same. This one was specifically designed for my machine for my model, so this is why I use it. There are universal walking feet out there that fit different machines, but if your machine has one that is specifically designed for it, that's what I would order, that's what I would purchase, because it's gonna give you better results if it's designed for your particular sewing machine model. This does prevents your fabric layers from shifting from each other and you'll get very few tucks with this. I find if you're getting tucks it's because probably your quilt top was not made very flat. You probably, probably had a lot of puckering in your quilt top already. No foot is going to help work around that. Okay, so make sure that your quilt piece is made as flat as you can possibly get it. This little bar here, I'm going to use my hand to lift it up, is a guide bar that was an accessory that came with my walking foot. And in this hole back here, it just slips right through there. And you can move it close to the walking foot or pull it farther away. I can get almost four inches using this foot between rows of stitching. So I use this guide and you're, as you're moving your quilt through it just slips right under there like that. Now if you put the foot this way your quilt's going to hit it and bunch up. It's not going to flow very well so it needs to go like that. You can also use this accessory to reverse it and put it on the other side of the walking foot. But most of the time I use it on this side, okay? The other thing that I like about this accessory is on my standard foot here, there's a little hole. This bar can also go in there and there's a little screw on the back, excuse me, to tighten it in there and you can move it as move it in and out as far as you want. So if you're just working on thin layers of fabric, you can use this foot and do rows of decorative stitching if you wanted to. Okay? All right, so now that we've talked about that, I've talked about the guide bar, now I'm going to talk to you about your hands. Your hands are going to be positioned like this as you begin to help move that quilt through the machine. Now this quilt is heavy and as you're trying to slide that quilt through there, your hands are going to slip. They're going to get tired. So you have a few options. These are those little rubber fingers that you can put on the end of your fingers. I got mine in an office supply store and there's 10 of them, one for each finger. So you can put them on your fingers and then have your hands here on the quilt and it helps you to grasp that quilt and push it through. Now there are quilting gloves, okay, and on the palm of the hand of the glove is rubber just like on those little fingers, and it helps to grip the quilt also. But they're kind of expensive, they're kind of hard to find. You can get them on the internet, but the best place to get quilting gloves is in the garden shop of your hardware store. They're just a few dollars, and they've got rubber on the palm of the hands. So in my early days of quilting, that's what I did. I bought those little cheap pair of gloves, and they worked Great. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to talk to you about how to get that quilt into your machine. Now, here's my quilt. 
It's all rolled up. It's heavy. Now, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to drape it in between your legs and it's dangling down to the floor and it's heavy and as you're pushing your quilt through it's catching on the edge of this table. It's going to make your stitches uneven. So here's a couple of choices for you. When it's first rolled up like this, sometimes I put it up over my shoulder. So my first row or two of stitches it's real easy because it's lifted, it's not catching on the table. And so I'm just going to glide my quilt through there. But after I've unrolled it once or twice, it gets caught on my neck. So you've got to go to the next step, which is kind of fold it in your lap a little bit. Okay? Big folds. Excuse me. All right? So that it's not getting caught and you want to keep it lifted a little bit like this so that it's not getting caught on the table. Alright, so on the beginner's sampler quilt there is a seam that's connecting the border fabric to the sashing. Remember we did just a narrow border. Now if you decided to do a much wider border on your quilt then you're not going to start here. You're going to go in about four inches from the edge of your quilt and start doing your stitches. So we're going to start on this first seam here and you're going to line this quilt up at the edge. This is where you're going to start and you're going to stitch right in this ditch from top to bottom. You're going to go all the way down that quilt. You're just going to keep pushing it through and as you're helping to push it through keep it lifted here. So you're going to stitch a little bit. Soon as you feel it starting to get like you're tugging, lift it again and stitch some more. Alright, so you're going to go all the way to the end. Now, you've done your first row. That was easy because you had a seam to follow. So now you want to unroll it a little bit and line up your guide bar on that first seam right there in that ditch. So here it is and you, here's my seam, it's on the guide bar. You're going to go out to the edge here and stitch. Now you're not going to look at your needle. You're going to look at the guide bar and you're going to keep that seam in alignment. So you're stitching along, keeping this lifted and help to push it through. Now, you're going to go all the way down to the other end of the quilt. Making sure when you're doing your stitching, because I don't think I mentioned this, your hands are keeping spread out. Now sometimes you might have to hold on to this roll a little bit and you're going to kind of spread it apart a little bit. Not really stretching, but holding it taut tightly so that you don't get puckers. Okay, so how you hold it is also important. So now, you've just done one row, you've lined it up, you stitched all the way down, so now you have two rows. Now, that previous row that you just did, you move it over to under the guide bar. Then you move back up here and stitch your third row, keeping your eye on the guide bar so that it is in alignment with that row of stitching that you just did. You keep repeating this all the way across the quilt. Now, you just did it north and south direction. You could just do that if you wanted to, but I think your quilt's going to look even better if you also do east and west. So re-roll the quilt up in the other direction, line it up again on that first seam here between the border and the sashing and start the process all over again. Okay? Alright, now I hope that this was really helpful to you. Now this is a tedious task. It's a little hard on your back and neck. So take a break in between it all. Okay? When you start getting frustrated get up and go for a little walk. Alright, now the next video in the beginner sampler quilt and it's the last video 
on the sampler quilt is going to be on the binding. Now in most of my videos, if you've been following my channel for a while, I've shown you pretty much just one way to do your binding. But there's more than one way to do it. So I'm going to introduce to you some other ways of doing your binding. Now to keep informed on all my future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. There's one down here in the lower right hand corner, says subscribe. Then in the upper left hand corner towards the end of the video is a picture of my round face. You click on that also. YouTube will then prompt you for your email address. Enter that information and the next time I have a new video, YouTube sends you a brief email with a big button in the center. You click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl. I'm really glad you came to my sewing room. I'll see you next time and happy sewing.